Hey everyone, Rob here from Gunfather Milsim, and today we're going to talk about CQB and doors, how we deal with doors during CQB. Now, this started out as a subreddit conversation on um, r slash CQB. You'll find me on there sometimes. Some guy was asking about how we deal with doors, and uh, I gave an answer, but I felt like it would probably make a, a better video than a, than a short subreddit post. So, in CQB, there's basically two types of doors, inward opening and outward opening. Yeah, there's other crap like sliders and stuff, but for the most part, that's it. In a residential setting, outward opening is not very common. Okay, there's basically three times you're going to run into it. Uh, the first door, the initial door, the screen door, okay, on the exterior of the house, which is obviously accompanied by an inward opening door, so it doesn't really count. You also find it on closets, which are usually pretty easy to spot because they're going to be in a hallway or you're already in a bedroom and there's an outward opening door, okay, closet. And the last one is not as common in modern construction. It's on stairwells. Uh, downward stairs, like going down to a basement, you'll see you'll still see that. Uh, stairwells going upstairs, not that common in modern construction. So what we deal with most of the time is inward opening doors. So that's what I'm going to spend most time talking about. So forgive me, this isn't perfectly the scale. Um, got a magnet here that's going to be my door. Okay, so let's start with outward opening real quick. Um, the main issue with outward opening doors is that you got to get the damn door out of your way. So let's say there's two of you here. Um, this guy's staged here. When this guy's opening this door, he's out of the fight. So it's kind of a pain in the ass because you're kind of out on your own. And then you got to get that damn door out of the way. And if you're kind of restricted for space, let's say it's the front porch of a house, there's not a lot of room getting this damn door moved and people moved up so they can breach the door or whatever, it can be a big pain in the ass. That's that's the main problem you're going to have with outward opening doors. So let's move on to what is more common, which is inward opening doors. So on an inward opening door, there's generally two ways to approach it. Okay, there's hinge side and there's knob side. I've also heard it called uh, strong side and weak side. I always use hinge and knob. But the point is most inward opening doors and residential are in the corner of a room, a corner fed room. Why? Because it saves space. So if you have the knob side, let's say the knob side is right here and you're going to open this door, it's going to open up and it's going to stop on that wall. And then you're going to know immediately, okay, this is a corner fed and there's really not much to see here because obviously there's the wall. Um, as opposed to if you open it on the hinge side, I don't know it's the strong side, if I got to reach across this door and open that, now I can see the entire room all at once. That's why some people call it the strong side because it's a strong position. I don't have a preference on which one I do. In fact, it doesn't really matter because the structure is going to dictate what you do and what you're going to run into. It's not like I get a pick. So I mean, if I do have a preference, it's not about which side of the door I, I approach on. It's I always prefer to, to clear to my left because I'm right-handed, or at least I fight right-handed. So if I'm clearing to my weak side, for me to the right, um, it's going to expose this left shoulder more. Are there ways to mitigate that? Yes. I can switch hands and sides. Okay. I can do off shoulder attack. I can do center stock. There's ways to mitigate it, but all those are compromises that you're never going to be able to shoot as well. And you're still not going to be using cover as well as if you would just on your dominant side. So my preference, if I have a preference, is to use that dominant side and always clear to my left. Obviously not always an option. So now having talked about preference, here we are back to our inward opening door and we're going to clear knob side, okay, right here. Um, it's handy because the door is right there. I can just reach in and open it real quick. But the bad thing is I'm not going to see much when that door opens. Then we're just going to pie here, clear this whole room from the door and then step in or clear as much of it as we can from the door before we take on those trouble areas. So if you're by yourself, opening these inward opening doors can be problematic when you're doing it from the hinge side, okay? If you come here and you just open it and you stand here and you stay, not necessarily even in the threshold, just at the edge of the door, that door opens and you are exposed pretty much to everybody in the room, okay? Everybody this side, which is the whole room. That's bad. Especially if you have a bad guy there in there who was focusing on the door anyway, and had made the decision to shoot whatever opened that door, you're way behind the OODA loop on that one. You're going to lose every time. My solution to this problem is when you open this door, when you swing it open, you immediately retreat back, okay, out of sight. If rounds come through here after that, 
you know three things. One, there's somebody in there. Two, they're armed. Three, they have hostile intent. That's a lot of good info we didn't have just moments earlier. Okay, then we can pick a different or better way to deal with that knucklehead. Let's say there isn't anybody, there isn't any shots, who knows? Then I'm gonna slowly move up and start pieing this door. First thing I'm gonna do is pie down here, try to get this deep angle cleared, okay? Narrow approach. And then we're just gonna pie the whole room until we see that wall. And then we're gonna step in and take a look at this hard corner just in case there was somebody hiding way over here that we couldn't see. Then of course we're gonna get trouble areas in the, in the room that we couldn't get from the door, like uh, behind a bed or a dresser or whatever. So let's talk real quick if we have uh, two people on an inward opening door. Okay, let's say we're clearing a hallway. The hallway goes this way. Um, ideally, we're going to split this door. The knob side guy is going to go, you ready? This guy's going to move back so he's not totally exposed to the, the entirety of the room as soon as we open this door. He's going to swing it open. This guy's going to cover his responsibility here. This guy's going to cover this long, deep angle. And then he's going to slowly pie from there. Um, obviously, this is a slow clear, which is methodical and, and generally how I think you should do things, uh, both in airsoft and in the real world, unless there's like a hostage or some sort of exigency. You should be doing slow methodical clear like this where you're using angles to your advantage. The only issue with this is, is this guy is turning his back to uncleared areas down here. Now, if this is the last room in the hallway, no problem. Um, otherwise, it's really frowned upon because it's just not safe. Because if somebody else pops up down here, let's say there's another room, they pop out and this is uncleared, this guy's gonna have his back turned and there's nothing this guy can do about it without getting online to engage that. It's just a mess, it's very difficult. So rather than just because splitting this door gives us a huge advantage, it's just not worth giving up that long security. In that case, and I've, I've talked about this before, we're gonna have this wingman approach where this person's gonna cover long and this person's gonna handle this room. This guy here is maintaining this wingman principle until your primary guy makes entry and then he's gonna flow in with them. So there's a third solution to this problem. I feel like it's kind of worth mentioning, but it's not really uh, common. It takes a lot of communication and in my opinion, it's not very realistic. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a two-man element just to maintain this long coverage and these two are going to go over here. This guy's going to maintain long coverage. This guy's going to turn around to set himself up for first light. This guy's going to come over here and pull the door or push the door because it's inward opening. Pushes it in here and now he's got the strong side or the hinge side and you can see most of the room. Remember what I told you earlier, ideally this person's going to be moved farther away when this happens. That's why I don't really like this approach because uh, this guy's probably not going to move down far enough. He's going to be looking behind his shoulder, trying to see where this where this guy's at, because he wants this guy to move forward, to be adequately covered from all the exposures in the room, and blah, blah, blah. It just doesn't work very often. Well, uh, theoretically, this guy could be back here covering long while this guy does his thing. But now this guy is in this guy's lane of fire, anti-fratricide issues. Um, he'd have to step over or move up online to engage. It's just, it's just a big pain in the ass. I think you're better off instead of having to deal with all these problems, just instead stick with the same side approach. Wingman, he covers long and stays with this guy the whole time while this guy clears. I just think that's the better way to handle it. It's, it's less troublesome. So that's my real quick video on how to deal with doors and CQB. A uh, big thing is just don't stand in front of them while you're opening them, whether it's inward or outward opening, don't stand in front of it. Try to get out of that line of sight and uh, then come back and pie the room slowly rather than getting that big first light. You're really setting yourself up for failure. Anybody in the room who's a bad guy and is prepared to engage and focus on that door, they're gonna win that gunfight every time. So if you like my content, please support my channel. Go to DiceShowTactical.com. That's my website. Um, I sell all sorts of merchandise that helps support this channel there. Uh, patches, lots of different versions of slings. Any purchases you make there help me make more videos. Thanks for watching.